Hello, optimistic oxes! Welcome back to Everlasting Summer! Last time we left off, Semyon just realized he doesn't take a shower. And that's not a good thing, so I think we're probably gonna go and take a shower. If not, I'll be extremely disappointed. Okay, I can find everything in Olga Dimitrova's cabin. Oh, yeah, we're going off. After a couple of minutes, I was w oh, I was again in the square with my bag of bathing accessories, which is basically just like a brush and some soap. Am I right? I would think they wouldn't have any shampoo back in the day. Well, I mean, like, not like the shampoo bottles that we have now, but like the small shampoos. Okay, I have to find the bathhouse now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we do. We gotta go find the bathhouse and take a legit shower so then we can feel so fresh. And also, this is a really pretty CG and I have not seen this before. What am I looking at? It was easy. The building was just on the edge of a forest. What? What? Okay, wait, wait. Why is a bathhouse at the edge of, uh, edge of the forest? Okay, I just had a moment revelation there. Maybe it's at the edge of the forest because then, like, when they're dumping out water, it's easier to put it in the forest than actually, like, on the campus grounds. Like, imagine if you had, like, a bathhouse and then, like, in the middle of, like, the ground. I don't know. I don't know how bathhouses work, but would they just dump all the water outside? Like, or would it just all leak out? Or is there just some kind of system to that? I don't know. I haven't been, guys, I haven't been camping. I don't know how this works. It is really a be it is really the best place for a bathhouse. I mean, if you say so, Semyon. I think there are n I think there was no Blair Witch inside, but the lights were still on. I mean, who would be showering at like twelve o'clock in the morning? I hope it's not something weird. And whose bright idea is to have a bath at midnight? I know, right? Like for me personally, I don't take showers, but I mean, for the sake of Semyon, we kind of need to take a shower. It is an utmost necessity. I muttered below my breath. There is only one problem. Is it a boy or a girl? Well, I mean, why why, am I, why not just kick the door and find out? Just go like, BOOM! I'm here to take a shower, now get out. In the first case, we could just have bathed together without any worries. Oh yeah, true enough. I'm not fond of public baths, but I can cope with them this time. Only this time, because we haven't taken a shower in like months. Or maybe weeks. Probably days, because we've only been here for three days. In the second case, I would have to wait or to scratch myself the whole night through. What? Couldn't you just like- no Okay, here- Scenario 1 sent me in. If it is a girl, couldn't you just like knock on the door and just ask like, is there anyone in there? And you couldn't you judge from the voice if it's male or female? You know? You can be something like that instead of, you know, waiting it out, cause we shouldn't waste time. We have answers to find. Who knows how long I have to wait. I peeped into the window, but couldn't see anything because of the steam. Ah ha ha, steam. The sea blocker of everything. It's not like there's anything in there we can see. Oh! Oh no. Oh no. That is not good. Suddenly, Slavia appeared right before me as if it was from a thick fog. Oh no! Oh, I have a bad feeling, guys. Oh my gosh! Okay! Naturally, she was naked, just like anyone else in the bath would be. Well, my question is, why does she have her hair tied in braids still in the shower? Like, no one- I don't- no, I don't think I've heard of anyone that does that. I think like, I've seen people tie their hair up, but not, like, leave it down. I don't know. Dumbstruck, I stared at her. Oh god, Semyon, please. Tell me about your manual- or your man instincts. I had never seen a naked girl so close, even through glass. My organ reacted as it should. Your, your organ, is that another name for your penis? Is that what it, is that what it is? Nerve impulses traveled from my eyes down from my body. It seemed like I couldn't leave my observation point no matter what, even if a war broke out. But Slavia didn't know- <laughs> Yeah, you better not let her notice you cause that would be a really bad situation! But Slavia didn't notice me. She was washing herself leisurely, rinsing her head, rubbing her body with a sponge and pouring water from the bucket on herself. Um, you know, that's- that's a great- that's great, Semyon, but we should probably move away from the window, cause you know, what if someone spots us? Like, I mean, I have a feeling that maybe there's gonna be some hijinks, maybe Uliana's up at 12 o'clock, maybe Shurik, or not Shurik, Electronic? Then she started to wash her hair. I can't imagine how much she would need to wash it completely, but minutes flew like seconds. That's how immersed I was in the site. <laughs> okay. Uh, finally, she finished washing, sighed with a satisfaction, and walked to the door. I managed to come to my senses just at the moment she went into the changing room and left to hide in the nearby bushes. Um, okay. Okay, Samian. Can we go inside and take a shower now, or are we gonna wait this out? The best thing to do is not to tempt fate and leave, but realize that I was too late. Oh, what? <gasps> no! Oh my god. 
Slavia appeared on the porch just after a moment, stood there for a while, enjoyed the night breeze, and walked in the direction of my hideout. Oh no, is she gonna find us? Oh god, Slavia, please don't. I had dozen excuses in mind, but she went by without even looking at the bushes where I was hiding in. Whew, okay. Dodged a bullet there. Looks like I'm lucky. Yeah, that was too close, Semyon. Too close. Too, too close. <clears throat> I, cautio I cautiously got out and went to Olga Dimitrova's cabin, completely forgetting my intention to have- What?! Samian, come on! If you're gonna go take a bath, go do it! Ugh! I was totally exhausted and wanted to just fall in the bed and doze off. Come on, Semyon! Get enough energy to go back to the bathhouse! Water gives you energy! My eyes couldn't wait and were closing from time to time. It was dangerous to even blink. I still don't know the camp well enough to walk there with my eyes closed. Okay. Might as well just- Oh! <laughs> Slavia. Suddenly, Slavia appeared before me. Hmm. <laughs> Are you going to sleep? Well, yes. No. Yes. No! Right at this moment, I me remembered the sight in the bathhouse and inverted my eyes shyly. Oh, yeah, let's not imagine her naked, because that'd be kind of weird. Because right now, she's our friend, technically, and it'd be awkward. Like, imagine if you saw your friend naked and you just stood there and watched them shower themselves. That'd be kind of weird. Like, let's not make this too weird, Semyon. And you? I'm cleaning up. Uh, yeah, you took a shower, right? She took the- WHAT?! She- wait, 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 are you telling me that she took a shower and now she's gonna clean up the square at 12 o'clock at night? Slavia, you're a strange person. Slavia with the broom in the empty square at night looked like a witch from a children's fairy tale. What? Nothing. It, is it a really good idea to clean- Oh! Ooh, ooh, no! Sammy and you fool! Oh my god. Nothing. Is it a really good idea to clean the square after I bath? And how do you know that I had a bath? Oh, oh, oh! The jig is up, guys. We're screwed! Mayday! Avert ship! Avert ship! Jump into the ocean! We gotta go! We gotta go! I physically felt the fear taking over my body. Cold sweat started to run down my back. My thoughts froze so I couldn't think of any excuses. Mm. Savia stared at me in surprise. It looked like my life depended on this answer. Well, your hair is wet. Oh man, nice save. Nice. Nice. Oh, you're right. I want the earth to swallow me up so I could vanish from this world and just suddenly, just as suddenly and irreversibly as I'd vanished from mine. Are you going to take a bath too? Mm, well, Slavia looked, the ba looked at the bag in my hands. Yes, I am. So G night. I turned around and joined back towards the bathhouse. Okay, that was awkward. What a disaster. How shameful. I walked slowly, tried to curse myself for all that happened. Well, Samian, it's a mistake. It's all good. We won't do it again. We just, just even though we have manly urges, you gotta be nice to the ladies. You gotta be courteous, cause then you know that's when they start to like you. I shouldn't have peeped in the first place. Eh, you know, Semyon, it's okay, don't kill yourself over it, we got this, it's all good. But if I peeped anyway, then I must pay more attention and think of a bit- Just because you- just because you can think of a better excuse does not mean it's right to peep, Semyon. Come on, bro, we gotta learn from the bad experiences! Oh. Okay. It didn't take much time to wash myself. Well, that's a good thing to know. As long as you're clean, Samian. As long as you're clean inside and outside. It looked like the night made its own ball. Possibly a concert. Hmm. Uh, continue with me more with the analogy, please? The stars were the lights. The birds were and insects were an orchestra. An owl, hooting somewhere, was its director. The sound of a wind in the trees was applause of the audience. Hmm. Never really thought of the forest that way. The night looked much more beautiful when you stand in front of the forest, flush, fresh and clean. Oh, clean and fresh. Suddenly, I heard a noise from the bushes nearby. Um, I think that- You know what, I mean, I think that's our cue to walk away. <laughs> I shivered, but I didn't get very scared. It may be a squirrel or another animal. Nevertheless, I should check it out. I went to the bushes, but didn't find anything or anyone suspicious. It just seemed... With a clean body and calm spirit, I went to the leader's cabin. Olga Dimitrova was already asleep. Mm-hmm. I went to the bed without taking my clothes off and covered myself with the blanket. Alrighty. I couldn't fall asleep for a long time remembering the naked Still weird, Semyon. Still super weird. You just you just don't think about your naked friends at night. That's weird. 
Ooh, a day four. Uh, progression, guys, progression. I woke up- Oh! 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 Oh, are we having an earthquake? Are the answers coming? Are we having a revelation? <gasps> I woke up from a hellish ringing inside my head. The ringing seemed to be coming from the depths of my consciousness. And it's not- Is that- Nope, it's the alarm clock. But after I came to my senses, I realized the cause of this ringing is my alarm clock. Hmm. <laughs> Strange, where did it come from? Why is it standing near my bed? Did you set it there? Like, I mean, set me in? It was half past seven, according to the clock. Ogadev and had already left, and there was nobody to force me to go to the lineup. Thus, I can sleep a bit more. Eh. I closed my eyes, but it seemed like my consciousness had already had its coffee, and I was ready for a long, productive day. I need to get up. Yes, Simeon! Come on, let's be daylarks! Let's go! Well, actually, it's too late for that, but let's go! Let's go, go, and find those answers! If you guys didn't know what that sound was, that was just me punching my hand into my other hand. Like, you know that thing, the fit, like, you just punch your fist in your hand? Okay. Moving on. <laughs> I should plan my day out. After all, I need at least to find out something today. Oh, I'm sure we'll find out something today. Maybe, hopefully, it can be related to our cause. But still, nothing came to my head. Well, you know, might as well look around the camp some more. Let's go back and check the bathhouse. Maybe that squirrel wasn't really a squirrel? I don't know. You know, things like that. Fine, I need to wake up completely and wash myself. Ooh, hello, Genia. On the way to Washington's, I met Genia. What well, got you up so early? Anything wrong with being up early? Still haven't gotten a definite voice for her, guys. I'm sorry. Can't think of any voices besides high and low and squeaky. Oh. She looked at me as if I insulted her. Genia, 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 Genia. Girl, you gotta calm down. No, nothing. Just curious. None of your... Business! Gosh, Xenia has been very sympathetic, even when she's in a good mood. But she just, today, she just looks furious. She looks furious and fear, fast and furious. Xenia is like a car ready ready to explode. Yeah, Xenia is a car ready to explode and ready for Vin Diesel to ride into the sunset with. The cold water perked me up. The fog in my head dissipated and my thoughts started arranging themselves. Oh, that's good. The worst thing, I think, is that when you start mo doing things and like you're thinking about nothing and it's just all automatic. I don't know. Perhaps it's just a natural instinct, but I think it's bad because I feel like people should th have like some control of their thoughts in some way or shape of a form or another. Curiously, I started to worry about finding a good place in the canteen more than about finding answers. <gasps> Sammy, don't tell me you've given up! Well, we kind of have if we've like going after a girl. But then again, we are doing more story progression. I brushed my teeth and was going to leave, and when a sound- oh, with a quiet sound wafted past my ears. Oh god, is it another squirrel? Is it the same squirrel? I don't know. Maybe it's actually a human. Maybe Uliana's taking- uh, being sneaky. I don't know. It's probably a squirrel, or some other animal. I heard n another sound, this time a bit farther. Oh, oh, are we going to the forest? Sammy, you can't be telling me we're going to the forest, like, right now. I walked to me trace along the path, searching for the source. Nobody. Just the morning forest. Oh, Miku! Hey, we haven't seen you in a while. Ah, while. Sorry, guys, that's my tongue going inside itself. Oh. I returned to the washstands and saw Miku, who was looking for something in the grass. What you doing, Miku, baby? What you doing? Noticing me, she smiled and jumped to me. Miku! Oh, hello! Good morning! I accidentally start scattered my tooth powder, just trying to gather it all back up. Miku, honey, do you know, like, you can get another tooth powder? It's kind of strange. The dewy grass seem didn't seem to help in the matter. Are you sure that's a good idea? Well, why? What else can I do? I don't have any more. It was the last that I had. She pouted, she pouted like a child who just had her favorite toy taken away from her. Well, maybe you can ask someone for more tooth powder. But then that'd be kind of inconvenient. Uh, okay, carry on, Miku. Here, I'll give you my- Oh, oh yeah, we can give you your- We can give you ours, because we just brushed our teeth. I duck into my bag. Nope, no tooth powder there. Oh, well, JK Miku, I'm sorry. We don't have anything for you. Hmm, <laughs> strange. Didn't I just put it there? I walked away for a minute, and now it's gone. Listen, it looks like I had forgotten it. I didn't want to tell her that I had just gone missing. Yeah, because that's not strange. Knowing the sensitivity of this girl, it seems to, it's safe to assume that the vanishing household goods would impress her so much that her brain would reset itself in order in order to avoid overheating. My god, Semi, you're making it sound like Miku's a computer or something. 
Oh my god, guys. Full circle. Miku's a computer. Oh my god. Well, I'll be off then. Yes, cheers. Visit us. I mean, visit me in the music club. I'm still alone there, but mean I. Ha 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 ha. Okay, Miku, you go do your thing, girl. Miku's voice f voice faded in the freshness of the summer morning far behind me. Wow, that sounds poetic. Getting back to the leader's cabin, I took my cell phone and looked at the battery Mitre. You mean power for a day, maybe even less. I'm still amazed by your cell phone, by the way. Of course, it wouldn't help me much here, but still. Finding a charger in the 80s and me inventing it. You know, maybe that could lead somewhere. Actually, no, that might just waste more time. I was going to head to breakfast when somebody knocked on the door. Oh, who could it be? The squirrel? Oh, nope, nope, nope. It was Slavia. Good morning. Have you seen Olga Demonitrimna? I stared at her. What? Semyon. Look, look, just because you've seen your friend naked does not mean you get to stare at her boobs some more. That's just kind of weird. And I feel like that would be super obvious, too. Like, if Semyon's staring at, like, Slavia's boobs right now, then, like, her- his eyeballs are literally on his chest right now. Or, like, they're at his neck. Or, like, they're- his face is, like, down. I'm pretty sure everyone would have noticed Semyon. Come on, Semyon! I stared at her breast. They had mesmerized me so much the day before. Semyon? Slavia was looking at me worryingly, but I couldn't manage to shift my gaze away from her breast, cause boobs are awesome. There's something wrong. On the contrary, everything is just, don't say a boob pun, don't say a boob pun, don't say a boob pun. Oh god, Dipinitribna. I don't know. She wasn't here when I woke up. I managed to finally control myself. Yes, yeah, Semyon, you control yourself. You control your urges. Don't listen to your body, your mind, mind over body. Fine, I still have one thing to do, so see you at breakfast. Slavia smiled, waved at me, and ran away. <laughs> what? Why run away? Then she- Okay, now I'm just imagining she's just like sprinting out of the cabin. I'm gonna just imagine that she just left normally like a normal person. Still, regardless, the morning was shining and beautiful. Oh, I bet it is, Semin. I bet it is. The bright sun was shining over the space and time displaced pioneer camp Sovyanok, warming its residents and filling them with energy to spend the day productively. Man, Semyon, every time you speak, you have such a really pretty monologue. Like, I feel like you're trying to be a poet or something right now. Or in my case, to waste its futile efforts to find an explanation for everything happening here. Alrighty. Well, there was an unusually large crowd over near the canteen. Of course, there were no other places in the camp the pioneers loved as much as the canteen. Cause food and dopamine! But why were they, why were they crowding all over the porch? Maybe it's steak night. I don't know. Maybe there's a new food in town. Maybe there's more drinks. Maybe there's a light show. I came closer to find out what was going on. It looked like all the camp had gathered at the porch. They were all familiar girls. Oka, Dimitriva, and like... Okay, I'm wondering why you included electronic in that description of all familiar girls, but you know, whatever, Semyon. You do you. They were having a lively discussion. Oh gosh, please don't tell me. This. Is this when Shuert gets kidnapped? Or is this- oh, missing? Ah, Semyon! Have you seen- yep, yep! Shuerik's gone! Yep. Nope. What's the matter? Is he gone? Is he dead? Is he crazy? I don't know! We haven't been able to find him since early morning. Disappearing pioneers. Well, that's something new. But wasn't he with you yesterday? Please. Are you asking if I hanged out with Shurik yesterday? He was probably more with Electronic. Uh, okay, that makes more sense. She was talking to Electronic. Okay. Yes, he was. So you woke up in the morning and he wasn't anywhere to be found? No. Why'd you come to me immediately? Oh, why didn't you come to me immediately? That's a whole nother that's a whole nother situation if I said don't. Okay. Well, I thought he got up earlier and went to the wash up or something. Sorry guys. My my friend's playing a game, I'll censor that out. Did he mention anything yesterday? Interjected Slavia. For example. That he was oh, that he was going somewhere, for instance. No. <laughs> nope. Nothing, Slavia. Oh, 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 come on, work with me. Work with me, game! What exactly is so horrifying about that? Yeah, maybe Shurik has his own life, even though that's a complete lie. He's probably wasting away in the gallows of that building that we were once in. 
He, he might have decided. Oh, he might have decided to go for a walk. You don't know Shurik. Oh, wow. And you know Shurik, Slavia? She looked over at me seriously. Well, no, I don't. But I suppose you don't know ed either. But I didn't see any such su anything suspicious in the situation. Okay, let's stop packing. We'll find him. Okay. Oh God, Uliana. Well, how can he miss breakfast? Uliana grinned. Oh, oh my God. Oh, Alyssa. Okay. <coughs> exactly. Time to eat anyway. Oh dear God. I'm gonna kill my voice box. The pioneers proceeded into the canteen. Yet again, I had no choice of where to fit in. The only free place was at the table with Alyssa and Uyana. You know, the orange haired girl sisters. Take a seat! She pointed at the chair next to her. I sat down. Aren't you gonna get your food? Uh, I feel like I've been through this scenario already. Oh well, keep reading. Good idea. I hadn't thought about that. Today's breakfast didn't look much different from yesterday's, but it looked more appetizing. Oh, what is it, Semyon? Maybe I was just very hungry. Or maybe I was just eager to finish it off as soon as possible, and yet, and avoid another situation with Uyana. When I got to the beach with us to- Oh, yes, I whole wholeheartedly remember this situation. Okay, guys, I'm gonna skip over this and get to new content, but if you guys don't know, we're gonna go to the beach, and then crab is gonna happen, and then blah, 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 blah. Basically stuff we've already seen, so I will see you guys in a bit. And we're here! And so, after a long instance of looking for Shurik, now we're at the infirmary because the doctor, Viola, you know, the lady with the monochromatic eyes, gave us a key and she let us be doctor for a day and now we're outside so this part is oops my bad uh, this part I shall continue from here I wonder what might she be doing something that I can't even unsee oh yeah Slobby had a whole box she had a box or something after a minute the door opened and Slobby came out she was carrying a small bundle um, okay, so according to the walkthrough, it says to not ask about the bundle, because I thought maybe Slavia was doing something behind our backs, but you know, I guess not. So, I'm just gonna show you what happens here. Good luck! I'll shout after her. Thank you! She gave me one of her sweet smiles before leaving. Oh, Slavia, you angel. You angel! Alright, I looked at the time, and oh gosh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna skip this some more and show some other interaction. Be back again, guys. Okay, guys, we are back, and now we have to make a huge choice right now. We are on our journey to go find Shurik in that mysterious, mysterious old abandoned house. Not house, sorry. Old camp. Old first camp. So now, who shall we go with? And I think you all know the answer. Go with Slamya! Don't reject me, please don't reject me. Oh, yes! She didn't reject me. Mission accomplished! We don't even need to look for Shurik anymore. It's all over. I'll go with them. Very well. It's better together. Yeah, you said it, Olga. You said it. Are you sure? I asked Slavia in a whisper. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I wanted to be sure, but she didn't answer. Just smiled. I looked speciously at Slavia for some time. Why is she always helping me? Cause she's a dang good person and she's a good battle to have- Good battle, what? She's a good partner to bring into battle. Very good. Good luck then, both of you. Well, I'll need it. The camp leader and the other girls said their goodbyes and went their own ways. I was quite surprised that they're treating our night walk through the forest to the abandoned camp as something normal. Well, I mean, you know, if they don't, if because, you know, they have faith in us, I suppose, to go find Shurik. Well, it can't really be helped. Wait a minute, I'll bring a flashlight. Good thinking, Slavia. Good thinking. A flashlight, sure. Alright, let's get into this. While I was waiting for Slavia, I had a strange thought. What is it, Semyon? Tell me. Why is she always so kind, sympathetic, and ready to help? Because she's a good person? She's a good Samaritan. Like, she is literally the, like, wingman of all wingmans right now. If she was a man. But, like, you know what I mean. Why'd she offer to go with me to God knows where? Well, I don't know. It's always the quiet ones. I do give you that point. It's always the quiet ones that are the coolest. Not that everyone else isn't, but quiet ones. Quiet ones are cool. Should I be concerned about her? Nah, Samian. I don't believe Sob is a Yandere or Sundere or any Dere's. I think she's just a normal person. I'm back. With a smile, Slavia gave me a flashlight. Shall we go? 
From what Electronic told us, the old building was right, or was built right after the war. It looked like the kindergarten, or like a barracks I expected, and definitely couldn't hold less pioneers than today's camp. It had been abandoned for about 20 years. It was now totally dark. It seemed like the forest was afraid of us, as we were of it. Ooh, are you telling me the forest is alive right now, Semyon? Semyon, you creepy F! Trees politely moved away, grouping at the sides of the paths and patiently watched us. And owls, who? Somewhere far away, but more quiet than usual. I wasn't afraid walking next to Slavia. Yes, like we said. Slavia, she's gonna- I, I believe she'll have my bag. Like, I truly, truly believe! Probably in any other situation, even in the real world, I would be scared to go into a forest without, any, without a proper path. But I try to get rid of these thoughts. Nah, nah, Samian. Fear is just, the, is just a temporary state of mind. We gotta do this. We gotta go! Although it was strange, Slavia would probably soothe my, self, my self-preservation instincts and sense of reality was blunted. If it continues this way, I'll jump towards some beast with a smile on my face. You're not afraid at all, are you? Meaning- Oh, meaning- Slobber turned around and looked at me, smiling in a strange way, either with misunderstanding or a gentle mockery. Or maybe I was just seeing things. Well, night, the forest, the old camp. Yeah, it sort of gives me the chills. Just sort of? I swear, Slob is just like a beast on the inside. No, she's like- she like is a beast right now. Are you afraid? No, you asked? Yes, but it's a natural human reaction in this kind of situation. I didn't want to show my fear, but I wasn't really scared. I just felt like being scared is what I should be in a situation like this. No, Semyon! I'm gonna slap you in your brain right now! If you think you should be scared and are not scared, then don't do it! That's just- those are just stereotypes. Or maybe like, common- common things. It was like my body had stopped producing antibodies to fight against an infection. I was not- I was scared, but not by the night forest, but by the fact that I was reacting to everything that was happening- happening to me in the wrong way. On the other hand, I didn't want to make a fool of myself. I see. Slava smiled again and continued walking. The path surrounded the trees and bushes was becoming more narrow. The deeper we went to the forest, the less clearly we could see the moon. For a moment, clouds hid the moon and everything was submerged into an almost- Pitch black darkness. Come on, Semyon, slap out a bit. We gotta keep going. I closed my eyes tight, and when I opened them, the moon had taken its place again and painted the world in the bright white colors of its night shroud. I only just realized how much I hate the dark. <laughs> okay, Semyon, probably not the best thing to bring up while we're in the middle of a dark forest. Finally, a clear space appeared far away, and a minute later, we were standing at the edge of the forest glade. Ooh, there's that house again. There was a ramshackled old, old camp building, echoed by rain, rust, and beetles. It smelled at us with broken windows, like a gape-toothed mouth. A silent rebuke from the dead to the living could be read in this smile. A cemetery fog clouded. Oh my gosh, Semyon, you love to think in poetry, or like fan, or like normal ad- articulated thoughts. Ugh, a cemetery fog. Oh, or a. My gosh. A cemetery fog clouded the whole glade, so ghosts, ghouls, zombies, devils, and other evil ent- entities seem to loom from the haze. I mean, to be honest, it does look like a carnival ride. Like, if, a, if that was like a Halloween ride, I'm pretty sure it would be really awesome. The sight was enough to give the average person a heart attack, or at least a panic attack. If Slavia hadn't taken my hand, I surely wouldn't have been able to stand it. Oh. Slavia, you don't have to do with that. It won't be scary this way. She smiled. I could say anything else, just grasped her hand tightly. Man, she's like more manly than we are. What am I even doing here? Looking at Shurik in the night forest? Here? How could I ever agree? It's cause, you know, everyone trusts Semyon. There's not a single normal, normal person who were to do, but the world around me can't be really called normal. I tried to persuade myself that I was finding answers, and that it couldn't really get any worse. Oh, please, it could get much worse. There could be ghosts, ghouls, and demons. They could come out right now and show Shurik's dead body. That'd be pretty worse. 
To be honest, nothing bad has actually happened to me during the last four days in this camp. Besides, I had no special reason to think that something bad would happen. Well, I mean, if we were paranoid, but we're not, right, Samian? We are completely sane. Maybe it's just the way the world works. People can't live without adventures? Mm -hmm, I suppose not. Shall we go? Yeah, um, yeah, I guess. But we didn't make a move. Slavia seemed to be waiting for me to take the first step, but I had just enough courage to stand still without running away. Ooh, God. The moon showed up from behind the clouds again and lift the, lit the old camp building. Oh, thank you, moon lo illuminating the, the house. That makes me feel so much better. Now it looked like less of a tomb, but all dead pictures in my imagination grew real. Yeah, now it literally looks like a like if you took a picture of this house right now and showed it to someone in like the Sto Scooby Doo gang, this is literally what it's meant for. Like, really? Visions of ghosts became more focused, and the wailing of the wind and the grass rustling seemed- Oh god, clearer. Noises of the unknown origin could be hear heard from afar. Seems like it was a great place before, but... I looked at Slava carefully. Maybe she was so scared that she was trying to hide it. I don't know. I honestly think she has no fear right now. Do all these women have no fear? Are we the only ones that's a wimp? Knowing that I feel a little- Oh, knowing that I felt a little better and calmer. Maybe. Let's go. Sure. I stepped carefully, watching every step, but trying not to touch the old fence, the crooked merry-go-round, or the rusty slide. In some places, the grass was waist-high, so any wrong move could lead to broken legs or hands. At last, we came to the entrance, and I pointed my flashlight inside. The darkness that looked back at me was much scarier than the view outside, at least the moon shone brightly there. I gathered all, all my courage and crossed the threshold. Alrighty guys, time to go into another mystical, magical, master masterpiece of an adventure. Ugh. And what is this? The inside of the old camp building looked like a kindergarten from my childhood. Wow, Semyon, you must have had a terrible childhood. The layout of the interior, even the rotten furniture was similar. <gasps> Maybe this is all a trick thing. We're actually in the past, but in the future. Well... I shivered, picking out more and more remains of the joy of the children long gone with the flashlight. Creepy. Whoa. Whoa, Slavia. You're giving me a creepy look there, and I don't know how I feel about that right now.